He has a um, long history in social services. Nā rei re te nei te mihi atu ki a koe hira, no mai hara mai. Nā mihi nui i pakaia i koe ki te hara mai, ki te mau mai te nei kaupapa, ki o tātou wahine. Kia ora tātou. Ko mai. Tēnā koe, Madam Rekajemi. Hoi nō, mihi tūtahi kia tātou katoa. I roto i tēnei whare, e mihi kau atu ana ki te whare e tū nei, ki te marae e waho, tū atu tū mai, ki ngā tini me ngā mano, kua hauhau mai i roto i tēnei whare krakia, kua noho tahi i runga i roto i te marae i raro hoki i ngā maru maru ātawhai o Ngāti Whātua. Nō reira kā nui te hari, kā nui te koa. Mihi kau atu ana hoki kia koutou katoa ngā wahine toa. Te Rōpū Anglican Women's Centre, tēnā koutou katoa mā tēnei klanga, kia haere mai, kia... Kia kōrero tahi, kia hakarongo ki ngā mahi kwa mahi tia i ngā mahi, ngā ringaringa kaha, ngā ringaringa ātawhai ngā wahine. Te hāi mihi ngā re, ngā reira tēnā tātou katoa. Ko waia hau, ko hera, tika ana ngā kōrero o Madam Vicar General. Um, I just want to just take a little time out of my introduction and just acknowledge, um, I, I, I say this with all due respect to you, uh, Madam Vicar General. We haven't had a Māori Vicar General and, and I, want to, I want to continue to say that and, and for, uh, and for my whanauna and also in a Māori woman bishop. And you know, I think that these are reasons for celebration. And I, I absolutely take my place uh, alongside uh, that long line of supporting uh, wahine in our church. So it's been my, uh, my privilege to be working alongside you recently. Um, I kind of figure, um, and so yes, you've heard I'm from uh, Te Upauri, uh, from Ngāpuhi and uh, Ngāti Poro. My Te Upauri side is probably the strongest of my Anglican uh, uh, motivation and persuasion in life, and, um, uh, and I will speak to that shortly. But I was thinking uh, we're in afternoon tea, uh, and we've just completed afternoon tea, should I say, and I find, kind of thought it might be a good opportunity for us to just uh, participate because I think that when we think about, uh, and when we think about um, subject matters like reconciliation and restoration, it's about looking at ourselves and what that looks like to be of a reconciliatory role alongside of restoration. And so to start us off, I've got this little, um, I've got this little thing that I'd like us to, to, to uh, be a part of, and I'm going to move away from the mic, but my children tell me that my voice is very strong, and I will attest to, in another lifetime, in the 1990s, I used to be the Sunday school teacher here at Holy Sepulchre, and so I'm going to rely on that voice to reconcile me back to today. Kia ora tātou. So it's going to go like this. So I've got, and I'm going to need to have little five groups. And you can kind of stay where you are if you like, but you can huddle if you like. And I'm going to give you a, a sheet of paper. And so five kind of big groups. So you're going to have a group that's going to be A. You're going to have another group that's going to be A. So A, E, E, O, U. All right, so we're just going to do an uplifting 
to continue the momentum that was started earlier this morning. But as we've had a big lunch and we've had a delicious, sweet uh, afternoon tea, let's do something to hākina kina ourselves. So I'm going to start at this end. <laughs> okay. So we're holding it for a
Kia ora oh, let us just get our breath and continue on. So, I want to, uh, I want to begin with introducing uh, to you those who, in my work of reconciliation and restoration, which is really the word that I gave for the role, because originally I was invited, as Bishop Y knows, I was invited to be the commissary of redress. Um, I decided that actually redress is the end product of bringing people together. So reconciling inside a subject matter that's um, that in the year and maybe just over a year and a half that I've been in this position. Uh, I've, I've listened to people talk about me uh, and talk about the way, oh, that's that woman with the abuse. That's the woman who <laughs> talked about abuse, historical abuse. Oh, oh, how do I introduce myself, you know? And so I want people to know, first of all, um, I come from a long line, like many of you who are here. Uh, today, uh, uh, my phenomena, and many of you, I've, I've not been adopted, but I've uh, pledged an adoption and applied to be part of your different uh, hui omorangi at different times. And so I want to introduce uh, to you people who have been significant inside this topic of um, many hands uh, to hold us. And in my in my translation, because te, te, te ao Māori, te reo Māori was my first language, um, it's about ngā ringa ringa ātawhai. Ngā ringa ringa ātawhai, and I want to introduce you to some of those people who have been those ringa, who have provided that ringa ringa ātawhai to me and to the work that I do. I want to uh, firstly introduce you to uh, Reverend Putty Murray. Reverend uh, Putty Murray, Murray, who hails from the far north, um, her maiden name is Kappa, which is the same as my maiden name. She's a first cousin to my father and a first cousin to Uncle Matu. Uh, their, that's their Teupodi uh, connection. And she had, a, had a, a really special, and some of you who were with me at Te Kwiti over the weekend, you will know this story. And, um, and in fact, after that, uh, after the hui in Te Kwiti on uh, Saturday, we named Bishop Philip Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so, Auntie Puti, uh, and I'll do the short version, uh, Back in the 90s, I was working as a social worker in the Department of Social, uh, Department of social Welfare. Uh, I, I had been there for several years. I was a senior social worker and had a nice little team, etc. My auntie on this wonderful, um, this wonderful August afternoon came into the offices in Richmond Road, Grey Lynn, and um, asked to see me, sent the receptionist to come and get me. Her first words were not lovely to see you. How are you, Ehera? Lovely that I've come here to meet. I thought she was going to invite me out for lunch. But her words were, Kanui tēnā, me hoki mai koe te, he te mahi mo te hāhi. Uh, that's enough of your work here with the government, it's now time for you to return to the church, to give your time to the church. Um, unfortunately, at that very point in time, I was unable to. I, I explained to her that at the moment, I have two sons who were attending St. Stephen's Boys College. I uh, had, uh, I was I was, I think, probably seven months heavily pregnant 
My husband was completing his uh, degree uh, at university and we just bought a new house. So economically, it wasn't a good time for, for me to move. I said to her, however, I will pray about this. And so I did. Six months on, my auntie came back, as she said she would, and uh, said, well, we are ready. I am ready to return home. It's your time. So after a quick response, I agreed to. I agreed to return to, the, to, to, to take up this role at the church with Te Whare Ruru Ho O Meri. Slides, man. Um, oh, and taking with me, um, and I want to acknowledge uh, Reverend Atareta Hills. This is my sister, one of my, um, one of my sisters who's ordained priest, uh, who is a priest, uh, and, and also somebody who held that ringa ringa atapai for me. Uh, and then there's Atareta, and then there's Iritana. And so, I guess you can see the picture that these hands uh, that were there to hold and to look after me were very strong hands um, and very caring. And so here is uh, the original Whare Ruruho Omeri. And I mentioned my sisters because they too came with me with the position. I, um, upon, uh, upon agreeing to take up this position, but like Carrie Ann this morning, you know, we, we believe that there's a God there and that we've been called to these special responsibilities. And the special responsibility was my chosen subject matter, which was looking after tamariki, which is what um, Te Whare Ruruho became. When Auntie Putti had uh, signed me up, she, there were just a few little details that she forgot to mention uh, about the position. Um, so it was A, full time, so I had resigned from Department of Social Welfare at DSW, and um, there was a salary on the table of 40K, 40K for the year, for two people for two people. And um, she said, but you're still young, you can find some other jobs, you, you, you could do this. And originally, Te Whare Ruruho was set up as a woman's centre. Some of you who will remember uh, Whare Ruruho from its early developments, we had the lovely uh, Cherry Epai, or Hera Epai, she soon became, uh, Auntie Puti's um, uh, uh, or a succession plan is what I want to say. Jenny was another one of those succession plans uh, with Jamie Marsden and Putti Mar and Putti. And, and so uh, I, I became kind of uncertain how I'm going to report this to my husband for a start. That uh, uh, we're now on, it went from 40 to K, uh, 40K to 20K and just a flick of a finger. And so I needed to be quick smart about what can I do, what skills. Because as a, as a centre in Otahuhu, it was really a, a, a peaceful place for prayer. They had Bible study, there were cooking classes, and they were making curtains and tablecloth. I could hardly, you know, put a thread through the needle, let alone expect to sew something. Um, so I really needed to work hard to use my skills and my skills were I was a social worker and my role was working with children and of an investigative nature. So that was my, that was the skill set that I brought to Te Whare Ruruho Ro Meri. I want you, oh, can we just go back to that slide please? So I want you to just have a really good look at that photo. It's a very, very old whare and it was by... Eliza, um, I can't remember her husband name, the Reverend Kenderdine and his wife Eliza, who uh, in the 18th century, 18, I want to say 1880s, decided that this home in Otahuhu 
which was run by the Anglican Trust for Women and Children, that the endowments there would also apply to tikanga Māori. So that was legislation. And so therefore, Te Whareruruho already uh, had assets that were to be shared with tikanga Māori. We didn't access that until a fine gentleman by the name of Dave Jackson took it upon himself to ensure that the funds were handed over to Taitokero Tiganga Māori. Um, years, uh, years on, and I was there for nearly 20 years, in my last five years we were being asked by the new director, following uh, the passing of Dave Jackson, the new director wanted us off the property. And so that's when the real fun, you know, the real fun happened because we had a right to be there. We had a right. It was, our, it was our given right to remain. And we did all sorts of things to keep ourselves inside that building and attached to Anglican Trust for Women and Children. And some of those little things we did, because the director had organised to send a truck to come and pick our things up. And so a little phone call to Te Karere, where my brother just happens to work. Um, so he arrives at the, at the whare, the big truck is there, Hone Ka's my chairperson, I ask him to stand out the front and do a little haka, let's catch that, and we're being asked to leave. And so the director withdrew, withdrew the, the um, and eviction and we maintained another year but it kept on going so this whare here uh, has meant a lot to me I understand that the current whare duruho has since moved uh, I would have just stayed there because it was our right um, so just then look at those beautiful gardens I'll show you shortly um, what sort of things we did so um, in our next slide it'll show tamariki so we decided that, uh, I decided, that we will provide a safe place for children, um, for children to come in and to receive social work intervention and counselling. Um, it wasn't too long before, and I'd say at least six months before our funding went from 40k to 150 and it was really about using your skill sets. I was a contract funder uh, role when I was at DSW, so I completed all the approvals and registrations and COPS documents and what have you, and within six months we became an approved provider of services. And we went from two people that I had to share that enormous budget with, Mm -hmm. For 40k, we uh, went from two to eight, including Hidani, Reverend Dr. Hidani Ka, who worked for us as well. Um, and we became a bigger team. We started to grow. We grew out of our former uh, building and had to build. We put a, a application to the ASB, uh, and we were able to secure 500,000 to help further develop the buildings. And so my focus at the time was on children and still is today. And uh, bringing tamariki uh, into our spaces who had suffered as a result of many forms of abuse. And um, after, after several years, we started, started to dis, uh, talk about having these safe places for children in the school holidays. It became obvious to us, um, my staff and I, after perhaps um, seven, eight months, that when the children returned from the school holidays, they had new stories of abuse, of violence, etc., etc. So we decided to set up our school holiday program, talked with um, parents about this, you know, got some real buy-in from the experience those who had lived experience. We didn't go to a crystal ball and think, is this a good idea? We listened to the voices of lived. 
And so we put the um, idea to the tamariki that we're coming in weekly. How do you feel about coming to spend your school holidays here at the Whare with us? We, uh, we circulated and socialised uh, newsletters across all parishes, Tikanga Pākehā particularly and, and Tikanga Māori, and asked for some support for towels, old clothes, old sheets, etc., and received lots and lots of donations. So then it was important that we put a name to this rōpū instead of just having them the whare kids. So we had a little competition to decide um, what name would we like to give for your holiday program. They came up with lots of names, inclu including Southside Rocks. <laughs> you know, we rock, we da 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 da, until we had this, uh, this little group came and presented their name and spoke to it. And it was a winner, everybody agreed. Rangatahi Jan. One, because um, Rangatahi Jam is, stands for Jesus and me. And someone else came up with, because I like jam on my toast. <laughs> so we came up with that name for our tamariki, Rangatahi Jam. And you couldn't, you know, you heard what the budget looked like. So there was no going to Rainbow's End, or there was no going to... to um, bungee jumps and such like. So on our next slide, um, we utilised our chapel on site. We had a little, and it's still there, the little chapel there, it's a Mary Magdalene chapel, and it became the children's playground. Um, and the playground there was, I think we were in a competition. Do any of you remember that, the boppet? The bop it, the, the game thingies, yeah, bop it, twist it, put that, all those sorts. So we play bop it in, inside the chapel. And it was interesting to listen to how comfortable the kids became being inside chapel, introducing it. And so they became that familiar when we visited, so in our holiday program, every Thursday I would do a church trail. We introduced church trail was so that the parishioners who had donated to us can see where their donations were going. So when we went out to visit and we were looking for a name for that, so we're going to visit churches today. So what does that look like, fire? I said, well, it means we go uh, from Mangere, we'll start off at um, Te Pauhere Ngawaka, then we would go to St. Andrews, and I love that somebody was from St. Oh, St. Andrews? Yes, Glyn Cardi was there, so that was our other promising support there, I, and St. Matthew's in the city. And so one of the children said to us one day that um, my parents used to go on a pub crawl is this called a church crawl? <laughs> you know. So we turned it into church trail. But you know, the voices are important and so it helps us to really tune in to what they're talking about and just reminds us of the context that they come from. And so yes, we're going on church trails. And um, in, in my years there, we probably had visited 72 churches. And so these wonderful parishes would say to us, oh, you know, what else can we do? You know, we've done the sheets, we've done the towels, we've done the da 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 da. I said, so would it be a hardship if we asked you to donate money so that we can secure someone to do this work? So I, I, humbly offered $500 from each of the different parishes. They told me they could do better. And so as a, as a result, we got $2,000 from 70 churches. That's pretty good. That is pretty amazing, and I, I will always be grateful. They saw the fruits of their donations. Every year we would hold the tamariki. Uh, and in the next slide, um, we would um, have the tamariki uh, being resourceful, being resourceful um, and having loads of fun. As, you, as I said earlier, in our early days, uh, 
funding wasn't great till we got to the latter part of my time there. But this is 10 pin bowling, Maori styles. Uh, so you're filling up all these empty drink bottles and you've got some uh, tennis balls and it's now 10 pin bowling. Well, and we were resourceful. It meant we didn't have to go and borrow or steal or take from places that we were uncomfortable with. And so the tamariki made this up, so it became a lot of fun for them. And in the next slide, here we are here, how comfortably we play in our chapel. So it was the place where they learned to sing, where they, you can see the young girl holding a boppet, and she, those two there were the winners of the boppet. So um, you're, getting, you're getting a sense of what this person who's now, who's now the commissary of reconciliation and restoration comes from. And in our next slide, um, we're teaching. We're always teaching table of honour, tamariki recognised and appreciated. So this table of honour, you're selected by your team to sit up at this top table and you're taught that when you're invited to sit at that top table, you thank those, you thank them. You mihi to them uh, uh, and thank them for recognising you inside that space. It's a, it's a really low key but very um, uplifting for tamariki who have come from struggling backgrounds to be recognised as important people. You know, and, and the slides will show you. Here we have this marvelous group. Uh, we, couldn't, we only had two girl leaders. The rest were very shy, but we were able to identify some of the leaders. You can see why. Um, when you come from some of those tough places. Um, and now here they are showing their, showing their fun side. Uh, we've Worked some, one of them's my son, the one with the glasses, who's getting married next week in Waiheke, by the way. Um, and so uh, their leadership was important for a lot of these kids. Good, solid role model males are important as well. And trying to teach these young boys to be that. We're recognising our church lead, our church helpers. You'll see a few familiar faces in there. Many of them have passed on, and it wasn't just the elderly that we recognised. There were a lot of our young, young kids that were coming into the centre. You see Christina Tapu, uh, Joan Mitch, um, um, yeah, a um, lot of uh, familiar faces that are no longer with us. But I. I wanted always to kind of recognise the helpers. <coughs> Joan Metch, you saw that beautiful garden at the beginning? She was responsible for looking after that garden. And lo and behold, if somebody played inside her garden. <laughs> you know, a wonderful uh, writer uh, and uh, an author of huge talent. And yet in the Māngere, because she was at Te Pauhira Ngawaka, um, and in, her commun in our community, she wanted uh, to just be a part of these children's lives. And in our community awards, you saw earlier Honourable Winnie Laban, um, an award to Mere Knight. Can you imagine somebody like Hone Ka, uh, who's, her, who's her cousin? She comes up, uh, imagine her walking down the aisle here, and as she makes her way down, he's standing there singing his song. Oh, what a night. <laughs> you know? And she's walking down. Oh, she, she was an amazing wahine. Amazing wahine. And here's the generosity of love, Dr. Joan Mitch. She said she wanted on her certificate something to say, uh, something said about her wonderful garden. Um, and here's the Archdeacon, Dr. Hone Ka, my chairperson. And um, uh, Hone was with me for a fair number of years. Before him, there was Kito. And before Kito, we had George uh, uh, Bird Karaka. And here we are, 
this is a process. Uh, this is when I was with Te Manua uh, um, uh, Te Ika, and this was us introducing new and old kopapa. And so the introduction, um, and I'm putting this up here because I think it's important when we have new kopapa to introduce, we have to socialize this. We can't just come up and say, right, the commissary is going to happen, guys, get on board. It's really important that you know who's leading this work, what they, you know, what's your tenor? What does it look like? I can stand up here and say, yes, I went to Teachers College. I studied at Auckland University, which I did. I studied down in Waikato. Um, but actually, this is the tenor of what I can do and what I have done. And so introducing new kopapa, like the commissary, like historical abuse, you've seen the work that's been done with young people, and the past, the present, and the future. You might know somebody in that photograph, uh, Bishop. You might know somebody in there. And this is just, and this is just exciting. How we, this was the uh, Kahui Wahine Hui in Gisborne. And the, the, the theme of the, um, of the hui was the past, the present, and the future. And there, there we are uh, uh, substituting as stars in your eyes. <laughs> stars in your eyes. And, and uh, the person there with the microphone is, instead of Simon, she's Simone. And I believe this group wanted to be the BGs, I think. Mm -hmm. The BGs, because they were, wait for it, staying alive, staying alive. Ah, 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 staying alive. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that th these are some of the places that we can go when we share, when we share our skills with each other, when our ringa ringa atafai are shared with each other and learning with humility, learning with humility. And um, <coughs> um, I think that these two wahine toa uh, ceremoniously um, acknowledged all the work that was being done, Lady Doris and um, Whaya Mihi uh, together uh, leading us uh, and wahine uh, in the church. And of course, here I am again, abuse and violence pre uh, prevention across the world. Now I heard, I think it was Ty, talked earlier about the World Council of Churches in 1997. Uh, <coughs> I traveled over to uh, Brazil. Uh, I was an observer on behalf of Tai Tokero, on behalf of uh, the uh, um, Anglican Church of Aotearoa. And um, my role, you heard me say, was an observer. Observer. It's the same meaning as it was then. Um, and as a result, uh, I attended the Indigenous Peoples Conference. At the conference, um, the person from Bolivia was unable to attend. And so the conference organizers asked the the 50 um, nations that were present, if there was anybody who could speak on, um, uh, or, or who was able to speak on behalf of the Indigenous um, Conference. And so I put my hand up, because I remember two weeks before coming, uh, before traveling to Brazil, um, I had gone to Australia, and I wrote, uh, a, and, I wrote and did a presentation on gospeling culture. So I, I put my hand up and there were two others. One was from Sami, was, was a Sami woman, and the other was an Australian bloke. And so they invited us to do our presentations. Uh, Aotearoa being the A's in the list, I went first before Australia. Um, and then the Sami woman and the Australian guy, they, did, they withdrew. They withdrew and, uh, and asked if I would speak 
um, on, on behalf of um, uh, the Indigenous desk. And so I did, and my famous subject was abuse and violence prevention across the world. And, um, and then I was elected to be a part of the Central Committee uh, for the World Council of Churches and sat comfortably inside the um, and sat comfortably uh, inside the the work of Bishop Tutu, and just you know I I, I was frozen for a start because they said to me you know, from the from the um, uh, indigenous uh, desk you will then need to present to the plenary. I said, how many of them? Because our whole church was nearly only about 180 at Hui Omorangi. And they said, there's just a little bit over. So I turned up at the plenary and there's 6,000. <laughs> and I was like, you know, and then you get fitted out with all these headphones and you're, you're supposed to be speaking slowly. Because I wondered why my jokes didn't, they didn't fly very well. You know, the joke was happening here and they're laughing later. Um, but I soon became familiar with it. And the subject matter was always about um, prevention of abuse um, and violence. I couldn't, I was trying to look for a photograph earlier uh, because while in Brazil, we were part of a, um, uh, rally through the streets of Porto Alegre um, with Bishop Tutu and it was amazing and it was overcoming violence and he was out there in front I'm sure many of you have met him because I know he's been in lots of places and he was like this little beady eyed and he wears this cap and he's like come on Miss Aotearoa <laughs> come on Miss Aotearoa uh, let's get ourselves ready you know let's get going um, because you're gonna need to, you're gonna be a carry, you're gonna be carrying a big load on your shoulders moving forward. And so, who's gonna say no to Bishop Tutu to be a part of the indigenous movement? And then, you know, and, and my biggest, uh, probably one of my memories of him also was at the airport in um, Sao Paulo, and he's way up the front with his entourage and way at the back with my plebs and we're standing there and he says, up here. And he just points out, you know, come with me, Miss Aotearoa Rawa. <laughs> and so we do. And it showed me this, the strength of humility, the strength of never forgetting, where, never forgetting where you come from. And the process of making sure that you're, you know, when you're, you're carrying this cross, that it soon becomes you. And those adventures, those, uh, those experiences um, from, from my time in the World Council became even more and more profound. Uh, and coming home and sharing, and sharing with our people. I remember going to Huyamurangi, Komiti Tumwaki, even if you were just bringing home some beads, even if you were bringing home a scarf. I remember I, I must have got broke buying lots of cassocks and stalls and, and things like that because I knew that there'll be a story told by that priest. There's stories for us to, to share with each other that if we, you know, little somebody from, um, Teopodi can, you know, and we only got one shop inside uh, Tekal, and it's a petrol station, you know, and that's all. And so if you're that little and, and quite, you know, a, a pleb as my kids would call it, um, but you can rec be recognised and recognise the wealth that you bring from those smaller communities. And I leave, and this one here is those sharing experiences to help build safe communities. This was my uh, one of the committees that that I was I led. Uh, um, several um, they used to living letters was the name of the groups, and so I took one to Taiwan, and I took another one to um, Darwin. 
and it was really about the same subject matter here. It was and it continues to be the work of lived experience. Those who had been hurt inside our institutions, whether they're schools, the churches, um, our institutes that are supposed to be looking after people, um, there have been many. And so the person you heard being spoken about and, um, and, the, and the history that comes with her and her being me has, has been my God-given responsibility to do this work. And so I want to bring us into here and how we are working um, um, and hopefully alongside the um, Standards Commission. Um, there was no real direction for this role, as I said earlier. I gave it that name, um, Reconciliation and Restoration. Um, to date, I have met with 307 survivors of abuse inside Anglican institutes. A high number of them, um, a high number of those survivors, um, not all of them are asking for retribution. Many of them don't want to be identified. Some of them are slowly returning to the church. I want to, and not because, you know, I'm sure if I, if I spent more time at the different churches, we could uh, highlight the different places that are safe for a lot of these survivors to return to. I want to say that in, during this year, I've been very grateful, been very, very grateful to our new dean, um, Katie Lawrence, who out of the blue, like absolutely out of the blue, um, invited me. I've, I've been working at my house, at my dinner table, uh, and Katie had come to visit my sister, Editana, of which we were very grateful, and saw my gear set up there. And um, later, uh, she invited me to take up a position or to take up an office space at the Wellington Cathedral. And um, this has been an absolute blessing uh, for me personally, I would say. It's given me something to get out of my pajamas for <laughs> and go and do some work and be present in a place that has lots of history. Um, and so I have since brought through some of the survivors uh, who have reluctantly wanted to be a part of church again but they are slowly coming uh, into the cathedral. They enjoy looking around, there's lots to see. It doesn't have the same familiarity of when they had been abused in the church. They're pleasantly surprised to see that there's young people coming into the church. So my role um, um, in uh, working alongside survivors has been really simple. Um, you can see how simple I am. Um, and it's being able to reach out to those um, who have identified. And I want to also acknowledge the the Huya uh, Morangi Kitemano um, for inviting me uh, to be a part of um, some of your learning modules. I've really appreciated that. It's given me also an audience uh, that I can test myself on and for them to say, oh, you know, stop making things up. Um, or, or also to say to me, we find it really scary when you use too many big words. I said, well, that's helpful because I don't have many of those anyway. <laughs> um, but it is also useful to have your own reo. And I've recognised that uh, in my visits across uh, parishes as well uh, as across Huya Morangi. I am really looking forward to developing some resources. Um, it was a 
bit of an anti-putty situation coming into this role, and uh, Bishop Y knows that. Bishop Y has been kind of slowly pushing that envelope. Um, um, yeah, and I'll just leave it there because I'm polite today. Um, so it is a gentle, it is a gentle giant role. It's doing things like um, using uh, a trauma-informed approach um, and looking. So it's you heard Wendy speaking earlier from from the commission's perspective, um, and and mine is uh, as the commissary. And I remind myself that I'm acting on behalf of the archbishops, um, which sometimes I'm a little uh, I'm a little unsure about what that looks like, um, uh, mostly because uh, it's a lonely journey. It's been a very very lonely journey. So I enjoy this opportunity speaking with people sharing stories with people. I want to know what's happening in your spaces because I know that um, the 300 that I'm working with is just the tip of the iceberg. My work uh, with the Royal Commission uh, in the last, well, while I was still uh, in, the, in the public servant service, um, um, I, I held advisory roles with the Royal Commission and met with several of them, met several survivors. And um, my advice really was around the principles that we know so well. Principle of aroha comes to us in two shades. One is love, one is compassion, one is also about boundaries. It's about a discipline. We have a discipline in aroha. You know, let's not get all, um, be romanticized that it's airy, fairy, and fluffy. There's a firm side to aroha. Aroha ai te tahi ki te tahi. So when I see you doing wrong, it's my role, it's my responsibility to say who you are, to address this. We need to sit down, hui tahi, so when we see what that looks like, let us look to remedies. Let us look at ways in which we can apply healing outreach. How do we work this? I've been asked several times about in my role, am I also working with perpetrators? Who? that's a harsh word. Their abusers. I faka herata. I faka herata. Kitawa kotiro, kitawa wahini, kitawa tamaiti. Hey, see, that's that, that's that's our language for perpetrator. Na ho i faka he. Rapu ai te nei mea te 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 huarahi. Uh, we talk about it all the time. Our prayer book talks to us about murua te hara. You know, reconcile, restoration, healing. What does that look like? And so, reaching out to lived experience. I'm really, I'm really proud of the church for this position in many ways. Because as a government employee, it's not a, it's not optional. It's not optional. Okay, the hair queer. There's the prison down here. There's the home down here. There's the da 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 da. -da. I'm not saying that we are safeguarding uh, perpetrators so that they continue. E whakahe mahi. We agree that it's absolutely unacceptable. So, I, I, how am I going for time? I don't want to be one of those ones, you know, like, <laughs> how am I doing for time? So, oh, it must be 15 minutes. I'll be finished. So, ho ho te rongo, murua ngā hara. 
Mahifa Katika. So I talked about earlier those principles of aroha, kotahitanga. Those have to be living things, not just talking things. Me tino upono marika, we need to hold firm to these principles and be value holders, building our own bodies of knowledge. I'm really interested to listen to what people feel about historical abuse in your diocesan, in your huiamorangi, so we can work together. Because my experience is that when we're part of developing our bodies of knowledge, we become the responsible people. You know, we become the action people, those that motivate the next story and the next story. That's how I understand it to be. Let us make that difference. I know when I spoke with the Royal Commission, with um, um, our panel, and said that this, this is not sitting comfortably, that we have survivors who have experienced uh, uh, abuse at the hands of adults, predominantly, and you're asking them to repeat and to repeat and repeat. How many times do they need to be re-triggered? Mm. Ours as a church, what I'd like you to be considering is how we prepare ourselves, how we prepare ourselves to welcome survivors, because they're not going to be coming in with a sign that says, I'm a survivor. But how do we prepare ourselves and what is our readiness? Our readiness, the things we can do for ourselves now is to understand what trauma-informed practice looks like. Then you start to locate yourself inside that practice. It's having an awareness, knowing what triggers people. It's no longer acceptable, I think. It's no longer acceptable to make quick decisions, and I've spoken to a number, a number of survivors um, and find themselves in a quandary because they've been asked to be the voice of survivors for a particular group. I think we as a church, we need to think about how we engage, talk with them, talk with survivors. How would they like us to ready ourselves to welcome back into the church or to welcome in our presence? What does that look like? Um, and I wanted, um, and I, I wanted to end with um, a little story, and I'm, I can try and keep it to five minutes. Um, years ago, I worked with this Catholic priest, and his name is, um, some of you might know it, his name is um, uh, Henare Tate, Pa Tate, and he used to be up the road here, uh, um, at Tungawaka, which was the marae that uh, another auntie, uh, Fina uh, Kupa, um, and, and Henare Tate, I, I spent my, my curacy, I suppose, when you're uh, at school, school of social work, and I did my six months curacy with, um, or placement with him, and he took me through this process, uh, I'm trying to short cut the story, um, where he had a family that he was working with, um, where a young boy in this particular community had uh, abused this young girl um, in the far north. And so he brought the case, he brought the situation to Tungawaka, and he said to me, all right, you need to get yourself ready. Your missus uh, go to social work and I want you to tell me what you think later. And so the situation evolved where um, the two offending, uh, the, the offending family and the victim family, um, he had invited them, because they were both of the Catholic Church, and he invited them to come to this hui of Hoho Te Rongo. And he invited the uh, um, offending family first, and there was probably about 
I don't know, maybe 18 to 20 of the offending family who came down and matching numbers of the victim. And so he had a krakia, and in his krakia, he weaved a pathway for this family, giving them space to talk. So it might have gone something like, in God in your grace, you know what is before us, all in te reo, you know what is, what is before us, that we have family brought together by blood and in your name. And together we look for an outcome that best reaches a sense of understanding and appreciation for the process and accepting of responsibility. So I had this, that was kind of what, from my, from my recollection. And so the family, the offending family gets up, and the first person to get up was his grandfather. And he stands there, and you can see the, the victim family, the whanau, were like, because they're cousins, they're from the same place. And um, he stood up, and mihi to everybody, and he penei ai ona Naku ke te he. My mokopuna who has offended is my, is my fault. That I bear the brunt of my mokopuna's bad behaviour. And for that reason we are here. We are here to, to take whatever comes our way, whether we end up in prison, in a police cell, um, or beggars on the side of the road. We are here on behalf of our mokopuna. And then the grandmother gets up and says pretty much you know, something similar, but to talk about when that mokopuna was little. And you know, there's, so there's all this whakapapa that's going on. And then on the victim's side, the family stands up there and says, we didn't come here to talk about your whakapapa. We've come here to talk about your violation to my daughter. The violation through all of us has hindered us, basically, all speaking in Māori, has hindered us from once being a proud family. Your violation on our daughter is a violation of our whole hapu. And we don't accept it. And then the offend, you know, and there was this conversation that was going, and then in the end, the young boy gets up and he said, oh, because one of the one, sorry, from, from the victim's family, talked about, we don't ever want to see you at our marae. You are no longer welcome. You have made our marae an unsafe place to be. He stands up and he puts his hand up and says, I will turn myself in. I will turn myself in and that I, and I will happily do the time but not my family, not my parents, not my grandparents. The victim family get up, another one of the uncles, and says, no, that's not what we want. We know what prison life looks like. You will come back worse. No good to our marae, no good to our whakapapa, no good to anybody. So there were these discussions that were held and I suppose this very, very quickly, this is a really, really short version, but it ended up in him being banished from the marae. It broke his parents' heart, absolutely broke his parents' heart. You know, they were of the land, they were. Um, and he was banished, and there were several programs that he needed to um, uh, be a part of, and she and the young girl put her hand up to say and said that she wanted to she wanted to say something, and she had the she she really broke the camel's back in her corridor, you know. And inside of me, my social work practice mind was saying, "This just doesn't happen," <laughs> you know. There are many levels. This would never happen. In my role as a as a as a government social worker, but the outcome, she stood up and talked about what would feel safe for her. She said, I'm only saying this because my mum and dad are here, my grandparents are here, my auntie, da 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 da. So she had the total, total support of her whānau. 
that gave her a courage to say, I don't ever want to see you at our marae. I will be telling every girl cousin of mine about you. You know, and, and inside of uh, the process that was happening, we listened to Murua Ngā Hara, we listened to Hoho i Te Rongo, we looked at uh, Te Ao Huri Huri, Puta Noa Ki Te Ao Marama, you know, and the, the whole kind of, you saw the conceptual frameworks that Māori, Marsden used to always talk about in the East Cosmos, but you saw them playing out in that Māori um, theology. But he begged to, to uh, the hui that he goes to jail instead, then put his family through all of this. And so, you know, those discussions, those uh, narratives or that corridor or, and facilitated with a view of working this through. Um, I'm not saying that that's what the role of the commissary is to do, but I'm speaking of examples of what that looked like where it gave action to principalities of aloha, um, tikanga, uh, kaitiakitanga, and wairuatanga. You know, when you see them in action, it's like, there's a breath, there's a breath being taken. And so in this role, I'm gonna be looking forward to, I hope, uh, um, uh, to come and visit with the different parishes. I know that just recently I, I got this whare. Some of you might know me from my whare, te kawa o te marae. I love using that. I took it up. I used to have it a lot at uh, te upoko, uh, uh, manawa te whake, at the cathedral. We had a, you know, it's, it's, it's marvellous. Um, there's simplicities. Um, and we get the job done. That's what we women do. We get the job done. And no reira, um, ka nui tēnei mō tēnei wāhanga. I'm sorry, this is, this is not on my budget to have business cards at the moment. I have no flyers. I have uh, very minimal, only what, um, only what mano o te whike are able to throw my way, I gladly take hold of. Uh, and, and I appreciate uh, the time here today. But as a commissary of uh, what I'd like for you to take away from my kōrero, is your contribution to what, to what preparation and readiness to work with survivors might look like. Nō reira e te whare, tūtū mai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. And my waiata is... Um, Arohaina, arohaina, challenging what you said, but it's a challenge to us as well. Mm. And so I just want to say thank you, and this is just a small token to recognise everything that you're doing. So well done. Thank you. Just before I sit down, my last slide, please, is the book. 
So I'd like us to, I just want a big ups to this book, uh, Tala Noa, uh, lovely story in there, page 17, just saying, um, <laughs> where, where Jenny talks about uh, uh, our women, uh, and Putti's featured in there as well. Uh, and thank you all for those who have contributed to this beautiful book. Noho Ramai. This time we were supposed to caucus in our, in our tikanga groups, but I think we've had a, a long day. Uh, we've had some really um, dynamic speakers today. 